What is Chicago's busiest commuter rail line? Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom and I'm standing here in the Great Hall of Chicago's Union Station. I'm headed to Aurora today. Aurora is the second largest city in the state of Illinois and despite its size and its lying on a transcontinental railroad, there are actually no Amtrak trains that stop there. Instead, we're going to cross another Metro line off our list. So the train that goes to Aurora is the Metro BNSF line. BNSF, of course, is one of America's largest freight railroad companies. Our train today, not only does it run on BNSF tracks, it also is operated by BNSF. It's also the busiest of all the Metro lines with the weekday ridership of over 64,000. So I'm really excited to ride this train. Let's head over to the South Gates and get on board. When I say that it's the busiest line, I mean that it carries the most passengers, since it's actually the electric district that has the most train departures. Still, with over 40 departures a day in each direction, the BNSF line has an impressive frequency for metro standards. In fact, the stretch of track we're about to ride is known by rail fans as the BNSF racetrack, due to the high number of freight trains, Amtrak trains, and metro trains that run on it. I think for the first half of this video, I'm going to do like a trip report style all the way to Aurora. And then on the way back, I'm going to try to catch some cab views. Our train today is the 1229 to Aurora, Illinois, leaving at 1233 p.m. Metro doesn't require you to go through a waiting gate like Amtrak does, so you can just head straight to the platform and watch your train arrive. The train wasn't letting anybody on yet, so I walked around for a little bit looking for something specific. Ah, here we go. I found a specific BNSF car. That's right. Since the BNSF operates this train, some of the cars actually have their logo on it. It is so weird to look at a passenger car and see the logo of one of the world's largest freight railroads on there. Anyways, after a long wait, we were finally allowed to board the train. These cars are the classic Metro Gallery cars that you see on all the lines. They have a door in the middle and then on either side they have a big space with two floors. I'm going to sit on the upper floor today but the bottom floor has some 2x2 two two seating. Of course the BNSF line just like all the other lines uses these gallery cars. Now normally I'm traveling with other people so I'll sit downstairs. But today I'm all by myself so I thought why not enjoy the views from up top. The reason these trains have such a strange layout is so that the conductor can walk on the bottom floor and check the tickets of both floors, eliminating the need for an extra conductor. By the way, the seats flip direction. Once the lights on board turn on, it means the diesel locomotive is ready to go, and we are out of here. Goodbye, Chicago Union Station. Our train today will take about 1 hour and 20 minutes to cover the 38 miles between Chicago and Aurora. Along the way we will be skipping a few stations. It's always important to consult a timetable before riding on Metra because on some of the lines it's fairly inconsistent what train stops where. Of the emergency exits. Each half of the car is equipped with at least two emergency exit windows. Opening instructions are on each window. Once we pull out of Chicago, on our left you will see the Amtrak yard, and on the right, if you would be interested, there is a Metra yard. I like to look at the Amtrak yard because you never know what kind of special cars or locomotives will be there today. Soon after the Amtrak yard, and right before the Chicago River, our tracks curve west. The tracks heading south are Norfolk Southern tracks that will eventually go to Indiana. 
Our first stop is Halstead UIC, the station for the University of Illinois in Chicago. Go Flames! It is a fairly typical Chicago station for Metra, with a short platform and the entrance really just being a hole in an underpass. Not extremely pleasant. After passing under the CTA pink line for the first time, we approach Western Station. Not to be confused with the other Western Metro Station or the five CTA stations named Western. Yeah, I am definitely doing a video about that someday. But after Western, we catch a glimpse of the giant BNSF freight yard. Along the way, you will see that this is not only an important commuter rail corridor, but also a very important freight corridor. The sheer number of trains sharing the tracks here are why this line gets its nickname, the racetrack. The BNSF line has 26 stations, some of which are spaced very close to each other. We are now departing Hollywood Zoo Station, which serves the popular Brookfield Zoo. And I've sped up the video a little bit, but you'll see that the next station is actually really close to this station. The next stop will be Brookfield. Now approaching Did you see that that last locomotive had a Savannah and Atlanta railroad livery? I'd never seen that one before. This is Congress Park Station, one of those stations that I mentioned earlier that we would skip along the way. We do stop at LaGrange Road Station. This is the first station shared with Amtrak trains. Amtrak's Carl Sandburg and Illinois Zephyr stop here at LaGrange Road, while the long distance California Zephyr and Southwest Chief pass through. Seeing all these freight trains on the line makes me wonder if the BNSF line would be plagued with some severe delays on occasion. I'd think it does help that all trains are dispatched by BNSF though. This is Naperville Station. This station is served by all Amtrak trains, including the long distance trains. Naperville itself is the fourth largest city in the state of Illinois. The stop after Naperville is Route 59, named after the Illinois highway that passes underneath the station. Caution, the doors are about to close. Just pulling out of Route 59 station, Almost everybody is off the train at this point. It's about 12 minutes to our last stop, Aurora. Aurora. Between Route 59 and Aurora stations is the Eola Yard, which was empty right now. The nice thing about the BNSF line is that you can catch a train all day. I took a train in the early afternoon to Aurora and was able to take one back into the city even during rush hour. We are now approaching Aurora Station, which is located on a branch line off the main BNSF line, which continues west all the way towards California. So this is Aurora, Illinois, end of the BNSF line, about 38 miles outside of Chicago. like the BNSF main line that the Amtrak trains take as well as the freight trains heading west to Galesburg, Quincy, but also to Kansas City and California. That's the Transcontinental Railroad. This is a commuter stub. Yeah, it just kind of ends here. Aurora is actually one of the busiest metro stations outside of Chicago with about 1,800 riders every day. It has good connections to pace buses as well as a park and ride facility, which most suburban metro stations do. It's also not too far from downtown Aurora, something that I'll show you in a little bit when we walk over there. So this building behind me is the Two Brothers Roundhouse. 
probably a historic railroad building, but now I think it's a coffee shop. Well, that was kind of cool. Like I said before, Aurora is the second largest city in Illinois, with a population of around 180,000. That really just goes to show how small towns in Illinois are outside of Chicago. What's interesting to me is that most of downtown Aurora is on a small island called Stolp Island in the middle of the river. What I just find very confusing is why Amtrak trains don't stop here, especially since there's literally a railroad line running through the city. I don't think it's unfeasible for trains to stop in both Naperville and Aurora. I think both have populations big enough that would support a stop. But oh well, I'm not the one making the decisions here. I found a place to spot some freight trains as well as the California Zephyr which passed through. I was waiting for the Southwest Chief as well, but unfortunately the day that I was in Aurora was June 27th, which is when the terrible derailment happened on the Southwest Chief in Missouri. Our condolences to the families that lost people during that accident. Back at Aurora Station, the train to Chicago should be here in about five minutes. As I mentioned briefly when we arrived at Aurora, the metro station is located on a branch line parallel to the main BNSF line. Between Aurora and Route 59 station, we go back onto the BNSF line. This line was built in 1864. That's during the American Civil War era. In the 19th century, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad, or the CBNQ, took over and ran this line for the majority of its history. In fact, there is even a locomotive on the BNSF line with a special CB&Q heritage livery. In 1970, the Burlington Northern took over the CB&Q, and finally in 1995, the Burlington Northern merged with the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe to become BNSF. In the 1980s, the state of Illinois came with a plan to save Chicago's struggling commuter rail lines. The Regional Transit Authority was created, and the commuter rail branch would be known as Metra. While currently Metra directly operates some of the lines, the Burlington Northern at the time decided to keep running its own line. That's why on the Metra map, the BNSF line is colored green, since that was the corporate color of the Burlington Northern Railroad.
at Western Avenue Station. Thanks for watching today. I really had a good trip on the BNSF line. Um, definitely would take this one again. Please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome and we'll see each other next time.